blessing and honor. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. All of creation, all of creation, now before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship, you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away. Shall not to the day. Can we sing it again? Let's sing it on. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, now before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away. No ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign. Hallelujah. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless word. Shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. For no can compare to your matchless word. Sing unto the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days, O ancient of days, O ancient of days, amen. The second song we're going to sing today is... Uh, uh, pr- uh, by a man called Tim Oluwira, who I think is about 10 years ago. Uh, he's uh, from the Far East, of course, with that number, from Australia, New Zealand, somewhere. And uh, as he came on the plane, he wrote a hymn. He's, uh, he'd stayed with us for about 10 days, a lovely man. And so this Tim Oluwira, all right, somebody else has taken it now, but he gave us that. And we could have copyrighted it, but we didn't. That's like us, because we leave things free. So this was what Tim Oluwira taught us when he was here. Hallelujah. How good and how pleasant. No, that's not it. How good and how pleasant it is. Running down and 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your work, word declares how brethren should dwell together in unity, as well as sisters as well. That's your plan. Help us, Lord, to fit into it for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Without any more ado, I just would like to introduce to you this afternoon... He's come a long way, but he didn't come on foot, so he's okay. But our dear friend, he's been with us before in days gone by, and it's a local man called Andrew Spence. Give him a clap. Come on. Am I on? Am I on here or on here? Hello, hello, hello. Ah, I can hear myself. I'm here at last. Is some of you waited here for two weeks? Or some people are still waiting for me at home. I won't mention any names. I booked other dates. And uh, I could have meant to be somewhere else this morning, but who knows? Yeah, it's all good. It's good to be with you anyway, Hollybush. It's been too long. Even if I only see that much of Edwin's face, just that is enough. Just that's enough. He covers it all. It's been a hard year for some, and for others it's been a progressive year. For some people it's probably been one of the hardest times, been restricted. And for other people it's maybe done them some good. But it's good to be here. It's good to be together. It's good to be part of the body. You know, there can be restrictions, but your prayer life doesn't need to be restricted, does it? There can be restrictions, but your, your time with the Lord doesn't need to be restricted, does it? And God has placed on my heart today to come here and to dig up the ground a bit. He's put on my heart to dig up the ground 
in your hearts this day. But before we get into the Word and before I begin to share anything, I sort of want to update you on on life itself. Exciting times. My wife couldn't be here today because she's looking after the youth at our church in North Allerton. And uh, about a year and a half ago or a couple of years ago here at Hollybush Camp, John Andrews got up one night. He was asked that day. It was the best... Uh, best thing, best decision you could have made to get him up that day, unexpectedly. But God knew what was about to happen. And he got up and he spoke on a word called love where you live. I don't know if anybody can remember that, but it was love where you live. And he said these three things. Build houses. Plant gardens. Have children. The first one, we ticked off. The second one, we ticked off. And the third one, we ticked off. We're expecting a baby boy, November the 3rd, this year. And that was a word in season at that time that we knew God had given to us. We had a decision to make, stay in Yorkshire or go to Norwich, and God really put it in our hearts to stay in Yorkshire. And this is our mission field. We all have a mission field, yeah? It doesn't matter where you're at. You don't have to be in the Philippines. You don't have to be in Australia, Timbuktu. For some people, that is their mission field. But... Everyone has a mission field. So, let's pray. Let's just take a moment. (sighs) Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place right now. Lord, these people have seen you over the years move in such ways, Lord God. There is times when you've taken hold of the meeting and you have done what only you can do. You have been the orchestrator. When the worship is gone, it is flowed. When the speaker has, has been speaking, Lord, it has been your word. And we just pray that you take hold of this word, your word this day that you replace my words with yours, that my heart's desire would align with yours, Father. I pray that our hearts would beat together, Lord, in sync. And I just pray, Lord, that you would minister to your people this day. I pray that you would speak into their hearts, that there would be a humbleness amongst us this day. And that we would open up to the word that the Lord is speaking. In this time and in this hour. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Just begin to lift up your voice. Just begin to lift up your voice. Your heavenly tongue. Just let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Hallelujah. Kura baba shi andara bakundo raba shi andara bakundo. Oh hallelujah 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 hallelujah. We just thank you Lord. We thank you. We give you all praise and adoration. Oh Lord, there is nothing we can say that is matches your worthiness, Lord God. There is no words from man's mouth, Lord God, that can give true description of who you are. But we give you all the honor and we give you our hearts this day, Lord God. That you would dig up, Father, some of the old foundations in our lives that we have laid. And some of the things that we have picked up from time to time that were meant to be laid down. I pray, Lord God, that we would lay those things down again that get in the way of you and us. I pray, Lord God, that we would pick up those things again that you have put before us in Jesus' name. But Holy Spirit, we just thank you. You are welcome in this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14. Please turn with me if you can. I think that mask has dried my mouth out. I won't be spitting on anyone anyway, so you, you're covered. 11 to 14. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14. We're going to go from this and then we're going to go to the book of Acts quickly. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart, and I will be found by you, says the Lord. Now at this time, before we go to the book of Acts, I just want to highlight this. At this time, it's about 600 to 650 years before Christ. And before this chapter, in chapter 28 of Jeremiah, thank you very much, um, what happens is, the people at this time have been rebellious, have had other idols, have built altars to other gods, and they've raised up their own gods. They've done their own thing. They've gone against God's word. They've gone against God's way. But above all else, they've turned their heart against God. And even if they didn't know it, their heart had hardened. And so God gave them an option. You turn to me, I will forgive your sins, or you're going to go into captivity. <laughs> it sounds funny, but you think it's a simple instruction, a, a simple option. But obviously in this case, they chose to continue doing what they've always, always done, which was turn away from God. They went away from his commandments in their life. And even greater in their hearts, they turned from him. And so the people get surrounded and taken into captivity. And in chapter 28, there's a, a man named Hananiah who sees that the, people's, the people of God are suffering. So he decides... I'm going to have a word for these guys. Not a word from God, but this, this word was Hananiah's word. And he said to the people, in two years, God's going to crush your enemy, take you out of captivity, and take you back to Israel. But Hananiah was wrong. <laughs> he spoke falsely to the people. So this is when the Lord spoke to Jeremiah in 29, chapter 29 of Jeremiah, and said, tell the people this. And so Jeremiah goes on and he says that ver those few verses again, which I'll read. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and... Pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Take note of that with all of your heart and I will be found by you. <laughs> you see, God was willing still to bless the people even in captivity. Sometimes we read this when times are good and think... Well, I'm going to receive even greater blessings. But these people received this word when they were taken captive. Can you imagine being taken from your home and put somewhere where you didn't want to be? But God still promised to bless them, to remember them, and to give them the hope that if they would seek God with their heart, they would find him. 
I want to say to the church today that if you seek God with all your heart, if you seek Him sincerely, He will be found. (laughs) That's in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. He will be found. Turn to me, turn with me, sorry, with to Acts chapter 17, just very quickly. Acts chapter 17, verses, let's see, 26 and 27. And he made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling, so that they should seek him in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God's desire is for us to be in communion with him. His desire is for us to seek him. Many of us are starting to live by principles. We're trying to stay away from sin and we're ticking that box. We're trying to read five chapters a day and we're ticking that box. We're praying and we're ticking that box. But are you with Jesus in that time? Are you really seeking him and is your heart devoted to him in that time? God's desire is that we seek him and that we enter into his presence through the worship of our hearts to his son. We know that we can go into his presence just like the priest did in the Old Testament. Because Christ has torn the veil in half. The very thing which restricted us from entering has been removed by the shedding of blood. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ died once and for all. I know this is simple stuff to many of you that have lived it for a long time. But I'm here to remind you and to encourage you to keep seeking, to keep going. Don't live off your old principles. Don't live off the old foundation. But live on the solid rock which is Jesus Christ. When you seek him with all of your heart, he shall be found. (laughs) Does your heart beat with his? Does your heart beat in tune with his? When you spend time with him, your heart and his heart will beat in tune. You begin to put on Christ. You begin to wear his fragrance. You begin to carry him. I remember a few years ago, I was laying on my bed and just thinking, God, where's... where's I'm going, to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And I had these plans of all these things I wanted to do. And God said to me, don't let your distraction get in the way of my purpose. Don't let your distraction get in the way of his purpose. Can anybody here say that they've not had moments where they haven't, been distracted from the purpose of Christ in their life to seek him fully with all their heart. I know that I remember my teachers saying to me, you have a lot of potential, but you're easily distracted. (laughs) Very easily distracted. Maybe that's why I missed two weeks ago. I can't even think what I was doing, but it must have been a big distraction. This word today isn't to condemn you. I haven't felt to bring you this word to push you further away from Christ. To make you feel like you're not giving him your whole. To make you feel like you're not giving him your heart. This is a calling from God to his people. To say, draw near to me. Draw near to me. I've seen too many people been distracted in the last year or two years, and myself including. And we forget the foundation, the basics, the simple things in Christ, which is to seek Him that He may be found, that He 
may be known amongst his people. I love YWAM, and I love what they stand for. It's to know God and to make him known. It's very simple. But we often forget it and make it complicated. So, where does Jesus want us? Where does he want us? There's a story of Martha and Mary that I'm sure all of you have heard. And Jesus goes to a certain village and is welcomed in by Martha. And uh, in fact, we'll just, I'll just turn to it. I might as well. I hope you're okay with a lot of scripture today because I've got a lot of scripture. Is that all right? Good stuff. That's what I like. Luke chapter 10. Uh, yes, Luke chapter 10, 38, 42. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? (laughs) Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, 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 Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part. It will not be taken from her. (laughs) What Martha was doing seemed to be the right thing from the outside. But her heart wasn't with Jesus. Hearing Jesus is of more value than our good works. I know it says faith without deeds is dead. And I know that uh, it's in James. But if our hearts aren't with him, then our deeds are dead. If our hearts aren't with him, our deeds are dead. Many people do good deeds. I was thinking this the other night. In fact, I was sort of woken up and I, and I wrote a load of things down that I felt God was speaking. And, you know, we use that scripture, we must do the deeds. Faith without deeds is dead. There are many people in this world that do good deeds. I've worked with a lot of people who aren't Christians who do good deeds. But the difference between them and us should be our faith. And who we do it for and with. But I think sometimes we take Christ out and we just think, let's do the good deed. I hope this is speaking to someone in here anyway. Because God wants to get to the root of our hearts. He wants us to have intimacy with Him. For some people, being tunnel-minded is also a distraction. Something has to give way in our lives in order for us to love him. And maybe it's relationships, maybe it's work, maybe it's gardening. (laughs) Some of these, these things aren't bad things that I'm mentioning. Relationships are good. Marriage is good. Work is good. Helping your neighbor is good. But when it gets in the way or in between you and Christ in your relationship, it isn't, it's no longer good. It's no longer healthy. You have forgotten how to enjoy the simpleness of being fellowship, in being with Christ in fellowship. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Charles Finley said, the backslider, and I'm not calling any of you guys backsliders, <laughs> but he said, the backslider is the most miserable person in the world. They have too much of God to enjoy the world and too much of the world to enjoy God. This is what I felt on my heart at 1 to 2 a.m., a few days ago. And this was, this was on my heart for 
not necessarily for Hollybush, uh, but it was for people that have witnessed sort of step away or their faith has been affected in this last couple of years. And not by COVID uh, necessarily, just by distractions. Forgetting the principle, forgetting the simpleness of seeking Christ and finding delight in Christ. Their first love has faded. The reason why they fell in love is forgotten. It is entirely emotions and faith has been lost. Doubt settled in a long time ago and was given a home to live. And Jesus has not forgotten those people. Jesus has not forgotten those people. I want to say to the downcast in here, if your heart is feeling a bit faithless, do not be ashamed, but take it to Christ. Redemption is never too far. Come here, my son and my daughter, the Lord cries. Listen to my words and draw near to me and I will comfort you. My word will be your armor, saith the Lord, and my spirit will be your sword. Those who hear, let them have an ear to hear what the Lord says. It will not be by your might, it will not be by your own power, but it will be by his spirit. And as God calls upon the people of the earth, hear his instruction. Delight in his way and you will prosper. Take heed to his warning and listen to his instruction. Simple are the wise. Simple are the wise. So how do we turn back to him? Because I don't care how far you are in your walk. I don't care how strong you're feeling this day in your walk. We all know or need to know how to turn back to Christ daily. How to take our weight to him. How to take our sin to him. How to take our doubts to him. Well, again, I'm going to turn to another scripture. It's in Matthew 20, 29 to 34. You can feel free to turn to it. Or you can hear. And this is where it gets exciting. And I'm on time. For once. It's about two blind men receiving their sight. Now, as they went out to Jericho, out of Jericho, a great multitude followed them and behold two blind men sitting by the road when they heard that Jesus was passing by cried cried out saying have mercy on us O Lord son of David then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet but they carried out all the more saying have mercy on us O Lord son of David so Jesus stood still and called them And said, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. And this is something to know. And they followed him. Have mercy on us, son of David. How many times have we heard that voice? And it doesn't have to be by a person we know. Sometimes the devil comes in and he says, be quiet, you're not worthy. Stop crying out. You know you're going to fall over again. You know you're going to do the same thing again. You know your heart's going to go back to where it is now. So be quiet. But these men had a secret that we need. And it isn't a secret. They continued to cry out. Have mercy. You see, if we aren't willing to humble ourselves, no matter what stage we are in life, we won't succeed in our walk with Christ. The only way to success in Christ is to continually walk with a humble heart. Continually turn to Him. 
with a humble heart in repentance. These two men caught the attention of Jesus Christ, a man who was busy doing the will of the Father. But when they cried out in humbleness, it caught his attention. Jesus stood and saw them. Jesus stood and he saw them. And he didn't only do that, he healed them. And they followed him. We can only love him because he first loved us. And he knows us and he sees us. But what brings redemption in our lives is turning to him through that repentance which we've just mentioned. And as the blind man did, the blind men did, they followed him. We must also pursue him. This was something that came to me yesterday. And um, I hope it meets your heart well and doesn't come across too heavy on you. To the bride of Christ, many of you feel like you have lost your purpose. And the Lord wants you to pick it back up. Many of you have felt like you've lost your purpose. You've been walking this journey for a long time. And yet, you almost feel fearful of the thought of not knowing what to do. Because you feel you should know what to do. But there's a reason why we have a (laughs) saviour. There's a reason why we need him continually. And he's good at what he does. (laughs) And he loves what he does. He is the saviour. He wants you to pick it back up. He's still sat in the chair waiting for you to return and hear his words. Some of you have thought that by doing good deeds you have fulfilled a void in your life and replaced your private life with a public life. You have become a sounding symbol of, uh, I think it's pronounced polygamy. But the Lord wants you for himself. He wants you for his purpose, to love him And to be loved by him. Wow, come on. Come on. on. I know we've got restrictions here. And it's great to hear a few amens. You're all doing really well. You are. I know you can't wait to take them off finally and be done with them. But God is with you in your restriction. He's with you in Babylon. So... I looked up this word polygamy which I couldn't remember hearing before and it was to do with a man or a woman being married to many people at one time. And I feel that the Lord is sort of saying to us you're married to many things at one time. But he's the only one we can have and we must make a choice in our hearts to daily lay it down to daily lay it to him I know it is hard because the flesh doesn't want to do it and it wants to sort of just gloss over it oh God I give you my day I'll see you later I'm off to work God be with me God grant me favour I'll spend time with you when I get some time. You know, I'm speaking to myself here as well. I'm not here to, to sort of make it like I'm uh, accomplished. I know, and this is why I love hearing testimonies and stories from every one of you. Because, or I don't love it, because it reminds me I've got a long way to go. <laughs> I know you're all young anyway. Mid 20s, early 30s. Some of you feel safe. I know I talked about this earlier, but I'm going to go over it again. We're nearly finished. 
In fact, I better hurry up. We're going to go past that. Earlier on when I talked about your heart beating with his. Now in 2013, there was some research that came about and was published in the Daily Mail. It must, it must be true, eh? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to read it anyway. Now a new study suggests even their hearts may beat to the same rhythm. Scientists found that couples' breathing patterns and heart rates would match up after sitting close to each other. They didn't even have to be holding hands or talking for this to happen. However, a similar effect was not seen amongst strangers. The team from the University of California, Davis, was studying the physical effects of being in a relationship. They discovered there was more to it than their hearts both skipping a beat at the sight of each other. Who remembers when their heart skipped a beat at the sight of each other? I hope it still does. Study leader, Professor Emolio Ferreira, I made that up, said, we've seen a lot of research that one person in a relationship can experience what the other person is experiencing emotionally. But this study shows that they also share experiences at a psychological level. The team conducted a series of exercises on 32 straight couples who were connected to heart rate and respiration monitors. They were asked to sit a few feet away from each other in a quiet and calm room but not speak or touch. And at one point, they were told to mirror the movements of one another. The data revealed both partners showed similar patterns of heart rate and respiration. But women tended to adjust to their, uh, adjust to their partners more. What God was speaking to me in this is when we spend time with Him, when we seek Him with all of our hearts, when we open up and be honest with Him, our hearts will begin to beat with His. I'm going to have to get louder. I don't think I can get louder. I think you're all going to need earphones. When we spend time with Christ, our hearts will begin to beat at the rhythm of Christ's heart. Come on. And when that happens, we begin to wear Christ. And when we begin to wear Him, we begin to wear His fragrance. And when we wear His fragrance, people will smell it. And when people smell it, they'll begin to ask questions. Can you see where it's going? But we must seek Christ with all of our hearts. <laughs> you don't smell like the perfume unless you spray it. And I'm sure... If my friend David sprayed it from over there, it wouldn't catch me. I need to spend time with Christ in order to wear Him. In order to gather His heart, I need to be close to Him. This is the very reason why I believe Jesus said, do not worry. Because He Himself does not worry. He's given us all the hints to say, this is how you are when you are close to me. Our hearts begin to line up with His when we, and when we worry, we can turn to Him and give us, and He gives us peace because our hearts begin to line up with His. When Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow, He wouldn't tell us to not do something if He didn't do it Himself. He wouldn't tell us to do something if He didn't do it Himself. But he's saying to us, if you come and seek me with all your heart, you won't be worrying about tomorrow. Now I know the flesh likes to come, and I'm not, this isn't to condemn, this is to build up and to encourage you. If you're worried, we take it to Christ. We live in a frail body. It worries. And we have Satan, and it worries. And sometimes we're around people who worry, and it causes us to worry. 
And that's another thing. You know, who we spend time around is also important. It's even more important that we spend more time with Christ. Because when we live in a world that needs a Savior, and when you're living in Babylon, you need to be spending time with Jesus. You need to be hearing His voice and carrying His heart. You need to be beating at the same time. Five more minutes and then uh, I'm going to wrap up. Christ has become your stranger, but He desires to be your partner. Revelation 2, 2, uh, 2 verse 2 to 5. To the Ephesians, who got it all right, eh? I'm looking at people in this room, right across, and I'm thinking, wow, if I can live my journey how you guys have lived it, I've done good. I've done good. But I need to be reminded by the Ephesians that it ain't all about how it looks on the outside. But actually, your secret has been what happens on the inside. And you've seen it. Revival meetings. You've seen the move of God in this place and wherever you've been across the country or countries. But this is what Revelation says. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the first love. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at the beginning. If you do not repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place. Do not forget your first love. I'm sure not all of you are watching England at the moment, but I really hope that they stay consistent, that they stay grounded and don't let all the good things that they're doing get above them. And I would say to Holly Bush, as inspiring as each one of you are to me and to many other people, make sure the first thing is the first thing. Make sure your first love is your first love. Do not forget the simpleness of loving Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, Holy Spirit. I pray in these last few minutes. Just begin to move in people's hearts, I pray. And I want to say this. His last few sentences. <laughs> I promise. No one else could love you the way that Christ loves you. No one else would lay down his life for you like Christ did. And Jesus... Oh, I was reading... Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.21 He made him no, who knew no sin to be sin for us that he might become the righteousness of God. And Jesus also said to his disciples in John chapter 15, 15 to 16 I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead I have called you friends. You are a friend of Christ. What's that song? I... Uh, I've <laughs> I don't know if that's how it goes, Edwin. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus. Sorry, I misled you. Uh, it's like I misled Jim when I said I'd be here. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. I'm sure David Willows knows this one. Hola. Come on, Amen. Yes, come on. Lift to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, at least we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. He's still there. Come on, 
Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus loves you and desires for you to be his bride. To love him and to worship him. And lastly, Jesus stood on the mountain and he looked over Jerusalem. He came to save them. And yet Jesus wept. They missed their time of visitation. And I'd say to you, do not, no matter how far you are in your walk, do not miss your time of visitation. God is going to do a new thing on this earth. And many of you, we are still a part of it now, but you've laid a wonderful foundation. But remember to put Christ first. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, worship song that I came across a week or so ago and I really want it to be played. And as it plays, I obviously don't know what to do with you. I just want to leave you to respond in your hearts. To let the Holy Spirit work in your hearts. And as it plays, I'm just going to pray uh, it is on for 10 minutes, but it doesn't have to play that full length of time. It can be cut off, you know. Go for it. Just give your heart to him afresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just begin to lift up your voice to him. Just begin to lift up your voice to him. Begin to, begin to give him your heart. Just give him your heart. My heart. Take my whole life too. Because I Christ when you sing this. Holy Spirit. Take my heart. Come on, hallelujah. Take my whole life too. Come on, hallelujah. Cause I Blessings that will fill your heart. I see no stain on you, cause you are my child and you know me. To me, you're only holy. Nothing you've done remains only what you do 
Just let me see your face Let me just hear your voice Let me see the one I love So near Let me see your face Let me just hear your voice Let me see the one I presence is so real
Sounds easy, what we've just heard. It is easy to you try to be what the Lord wants you to be. Take my heart. We keep taking it back. There's many laybys on the motorways. You did run well. Who did hinder you? So many people. Stopped off at a lay-by. But dear brother, thank you for this word today. It was worth it. You've not been here the other week. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But friends, as a young man, I really appreciate this young man. I've known him a long time, ever since he was born. You don't know. He set off good. Hallelujah. Setting off good. His heart's right. And he speaks from his heart. Pray much for him. Hallelujah. He happens to be a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm a friend of his. Because we are co laborers together. And God's plan for each one of us is to be a co laborer, not standing by, be part of the army of the Lord that's volunteered. We volunteered. I did many years ago. This young man's a bit younger than me. <laughs> Glory to God. But hey, this is the gospel. This is just the gospel. Do you love me? Follow me. Do you love me? Do what I tell you to do. Do you love me? Well, be like that. Be like that. Lay hold on me. Go with me. And distractions come. And that's what we've got to guard. The enemy puts traps as well down the way. Oh, what about that? What about that? What about that? Start stargazing. But, hey, thank you, dear brother. Yeah. And anybody that's... If, if you've really been impacted today, thanks be to God. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit that's doing it. Through the word of God, his word. And so, just to encourage my dear friend today, if the Lord's impacted you today, and you need prayer, or if you're just going to come and say, thank you, I know I need prayer, but help me. Right? Just come to him after the meeting, if you wish. Hang around, he's going to hang around. Because we're on a journey. This is a straight road. It's not a lay-by. This is a straight road. It's not the M1. It's every straight road there is better than the M1. So, hey, let's stand, shall we? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. Your word is life. You are the life of the word and life of the world, light of the world. Lord Jesus, help you Help you, Lord, and help us as we call on you, our sole area of power is through you to walk the walk that you've invited us to walk and made the way for us to walk. Help us to be willing and obedient to the call that you put upon us Follow me, follow me.
follow me, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Thank you for this fisher of men, Lord, this young man, Jesus' name. Say the grace together, shall we? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. It's for eternity, friends, not just for time. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. you made it. Made it. We all heard it. Yeah. We receive it. Yes. Thanks to Joanna as well. Sir. Yeah. 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 Okay.